the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome back, everyone. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the God. Man. Let's, let's all stand. Let's all get up stand and raise our hands and yell hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for this gathering, Lord. We love one another. As you ordained us to love one another, we love it. I turn to my brothers and sisters and I say to you, I love you. I love you. And I love you. Father God, we thank you for this breath this morning, Father God. We thank you for giving us a place to worship. Although we never stop coming, we are gathered today with everyone, Father God. We love you, we honor you, we claim you, most of all, we obey you, Father God. Now, Father God, for all those that are on their way, we pray for travel and mercy, Father God. We ask that you find up any and ask the seen and unseen, so we can make it here safely to gather and praise your holy name. Now, Father God, we pray for our pastor, Father God. We pray that you use our pastor in a mighty way to lead us, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Father God, we pray for every name that's on the bulletin, yeah. Father God. Yeah. We pray that every moment of the story that God will be to as you lead us, Father God. Yeah. Now, Father God, we pray that this service will go forth with another hedge, Father God. We pray for the speaker on yeah. today, yeah. Father God. We pray that you use the speaker in a mighty, mighty way. Yeah. Now, Father God, we say all these prayers in no other name but the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, and at this time, as hard as it is, because I'm a hugger, <laughs> as hard as it is, we're going to have to practice some air hugs, just showing love through, through um, our words. I know actions speak louder than words, but we're going to make sure that we are not giving physical hugs or physical handshake. I've been seeing the palm, the elbow, get creative with it. We love each other more than anything, but we also want to keep each other safe, okay? So let's um, not get anyone uncomfortable. I know I've rushed into a couple of my brothers and gave hugs, so sorry. But we're going to try to stick to the rules and um, keep the, the handshake and the hugging um, to a, a minimum. And then we do have signage around the church, so if you um, need to know a little bit more about why we wear face masks or anything about COVID-19, we do have our signage up. And just remember, even if you've RSVP to come to service, if you are not feeling well at all, we ask that you please stay home. We are still um, live our services. We are still streaming live our services. That way, um, no one misses out on praising God with us. Praise God. Amen. And um, one other thing here, we have we do have hand hand sanitizer and hand wipes at the door. If you feel as though you need to um, clean your hands, because we do encourage you to clean your hands. Praise God. And after every service, the facilities are wiped down um, with special emphasis on the areas that are touched during the services. Praise God. Now that we got that out of the way, praise God. Let's stand on our feet. If not, I'm only looking at you. Praise the Lord, church. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Huh? It is so wonderful to see my brothers and sisters back in the house of God again. Praise yeah. God. Of all kinds of something, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I am so glad to be here. And I'm, I'm hoping that you're glad to be here today, too. Yeah. Because, you know, fellowship is something so very important. You know, and it strengthens us and encourages us. And I'm encouraged just by looking up here at your faces yeah, today. Exactly. Glory to God. That the end is finally come, amen? Glory to God that we can come together in the house of God, fellowship and worship, loving on one another. But at the same time, I want y'all to use a little wisdom, okay? We're not going to crowd one another today, amen? amen. Glory to God. We ain't going to be all over one another. Glory to God. What we're going to do is we just going to fellowship together, hear the word of God, and just be blessed to be in the house of God together again. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful day it is. Glory to God. You don't know how long my heart has longed to this. You know, and I, I just know that this, I, I know this is the beginning right now. And I'm looking that as time goes on, that, you know, things will be lifted and we'll be able to gather, you know, in a larger number. But right now, can we praise God for what we got? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be here. And I also want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. Praise God. Glory to God. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Not to be honest to hear a word from my elder body, and I believe that she's got a good word for the men today, for the church in general, amen? Glory to God, I know that God is going to use her today. 
And again, I'm so glad that you're here. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. 
Praise God. So we ask that you stand with your Bibles. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Today's scripture reading will be coming from Luke 12, verses 2 through 5. That's Luke 12, verses 2 through 5. I still hear pages. But these are the words of Jesus, and I will put emphasis on number five. And it reads, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whosoever ye have spoken in the darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which have ye have spoken in the air in closets shall be proclaimed upon the rooftops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more they can do. Verse 5. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath the power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Fear him. Fear him. Thank you for the reading of God's word.
issues and things going on, and they pray. And just before the meeting ended, she said, all said individual prayers and mentioned other testimonies that God has done in their lives. And this afternoon, just before uh, she walked through the door of the woman and infant um, hospital, Say Linda reminded them of God's mercies, praise God. His everlasting mercies, praise God. So he helped her beat this thing at 18 years ago. The devil thought that he was going to get some type of penny pot, some type of crying, some type of doubt. But no, we have to be
2-5-3-9-9. And the Zoom for our Bible study is always the same every Bible study. You can also call in as well. You can call the following number, 929-205-6099. Bible study begins every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom, and it opens five to 10 minutes before the fellowship. All are welcome and encouraged to attend, to invite others, and we look forward to seeing you then. Mark your calendar for our GTMI church picnic, aka our family reunion. Our church picnic, also known as our family reunion, will be held on Saturday, July 25th at Goddard Park. Please note, due to the COVID-19, it has affected the operations of the park, and therefore the situation is fluid and could change. So please um, stay in communication with us, and we will update you about any changes. But until then, mark your calendar for Saturday, July 25th at Garner Park. Amen. And our final announcement is pertaining to our youth. Our youth fellowship is on break for the months of July and August. We will resume the Saturday fellowship on Saturday, September 12th. We will still remain connected to our youth and check on them and provide an opportunity for them to come together during the month of August. So details will be forwarded soon, and all of these announcements that I just read will also be e-blasted as well and posted on our Facebook page. So thank you all, and God bless you all. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for the At this time, church, I'm just going to review some of the ways that we can continue giving God the praise. Thank you. Continue to give God the praise through our giving. Praise God. Praise God. So members in the house, if you have your um, tithe envelopes, you can certainly lift them. If you haven't dropped them in the box already on your way in. And one of the deacons will come by and grab them for you. As far as um, others in the sanctuary and watching, we do have other ways that you can give. You can give online um, at our on our website www.gtomi.org, and then also we have a mobile app. It's called the Tithely app. It's spelled T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. You text. I'm sorry, if you download that mobile app, it will give you, um, and create an account, it will give you instructions on how to give. And then also we have the option to text GIVE to the phone number 844-615-0527. Again, that's GIVE to 844-615-0527. And then lastly, you do have the option to mail in your tithes and offerings to our uh, church here on Oakland Avenue at 125 Oakland Avenue in Providence, Rhode Island, 02908. Praise God. Praise God. And we'll just take a little verse of this, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together. like that not only tells you when you're doing great but also tell you how to fix 
what needs to be fixed, praise God. She's all about getting it done and getting it done right, praise God. So I am grateful to have her in my life as a mentor, and I'm grateful to be able to speak to my sister. Anything concerning church, anything concerning my wife, she gives me great advice, and I am blessed to have her, praise God. So we're just going to say a quick prayer over our elder body, praise God. And if you want, you can stand with me. Point our hands towards our elder Marty, praise God. Hallelujah. And I know it's hot in these masks, so I'm not going to ask you to repeat after me, but praise God, we're going to pray together. Hallelujah. One mind, one accord. Let's get it done, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for your vessel that you've chosen to bring forth your word on this morning, Lord God. We come in glory when we're able to be a vessel used for you, Lord God. I thank and praise you for taking over her entire mind, body, and soul, Lord God. Touch her tongue that anything that comes out of her mouth, Lord God, is of you, Lord God, and what you would have for your people on today, Lord God. We thank and we praise you for her being a willing vessel, Lord God, and we will never fail to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. So if you can just raise your Bibles with me and repeat after me. Praise God. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same. I'm about to receive. Incorruptible, indestructible, ever living, the seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God.
And praise the Lord. God has given me a word for the church, for the house, for the dads. Praise God. I did not know, um, again, that we would be here. I actually thought Pastor Pellin was going to take the assignment back. Just because, you know, it's the first day. I'm like, all right, let me text him. See if he's going to say yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, you on. <laughs> so praise God. I give him the glory. God has given me something. And many of, some of you were um, here the last couple of times I preached. Uh, at the beginning of the year and then at the end of last year, God is still, he still has me on that same topic because he gave me a word. The word was for me personally. But I know the word was for those around me, those in this church, those under my sphere of influence, those in my family. And it's alignment. But I'm going to first talk a little bit. I took a different twist because I had a lot of things written from before. So again, I'm giving myself um, a timer here. Uh, praise the Lord because it is hot. But I, I do believe God has a word for you. And so I thank God for my Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. I want to give him a happy Father's Day. I made a few mistakes. He said, you want to talk about 
And um, well, my dad said, well, first place, you need to start out with scripture. He's like, I know how, I know who you are, because I raised you. So, I feel, he said, like, you're sorrowful. And I believe you won't do it again. And um, then he's like, in any way, these crooks here, <laughs> as he started talking about business people, right? Because I'm still his dog. He's still going to protect me, yeah. right? He's still going to protect my feelings. Although my mom was very honest. <laughs> she was like, yeah, what? You need to quit. <laughs> and you need to resign. Um, but what I did, uh, I ended up going back to the people that I made some decisions on and was not cool, and I asked for forgiveness. And I said, whatever you decide to my leadership, whatever you decide you want to do with me, you can do it, you can fire me, you can whatever. But those were my emotions. And my daddy was there to pick me up. And I think about our God. He says, you know, his word says, all who sin come short of the glory of God. There's no one righteous, no, not one. So we all make mistakes as parents, as dads, as moms. And I wanted to talk a little bit about legacy as it relates to my dad. And as I think about his character and as I think about the character of Jesus Christ, and one of the things that I was thinking about, even as I thought about my dad today, and I remember on his deathbed, um, when they called me, they said, we want you to come say goodbye to your dad. My mom said, this day, he probably has about three hours left. Can you come? Absolutely. And I got here, and he was hooked up on all the ventilators. And I don't remember, I think, were there, there was a circle of us. Well, of course, my mom, Barbara, and Lily, um, and maybe a two or three others. And we were saying, just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I will not be moved. My dad had it spoken in maybe three weeks on the ventilator, and he lifted up his head and he looked at me and he said, just like a tree that's planted by so even in his death, even in his death, he was still teaching me how to be a woman of God. So I want to take time and talk about legacy and what it is. joint ears 
with Jesus Christ. That is our inheritance. In both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And legacy is related to the concepts. So those who cite scripture to prove that parents should leave an inheritance to children typically follow scriptures, a scripture's guidelines of leaving to sons. So I went, I'm like, you know, I remember we did a study a long time ago when I first came to the church. And uh, we focused on, there was a piece about inheritance. And nowhere in the Bible will you see anything being left to a daughter. Now, they'll give the general term to the children. But typically, and because the Bible was written, the Greek Bible was written in Greek, right? The translation of those words are, it's male, it's son. But we are the sons and the daughters and heirs to Jesus Christ. And so the son would get the portion to the first, would be given the double portion as the firstborn. And then if he or if he had siblings, they would get something. And it shares that in Deuteronomy 21, 17. You don't have to go there right now. But you can, you can note this for your scriptures. So what do we pass on? Legacy focuses on what will endure. It's all about passing on things of lasting value to those who will live after us. So our inheritance, when we leave here, what are we going to, dads, what are you going to leave your children? Parents, what are you going to leave your children? Single people, what are you going to leave as your legacy? What are you going to leave for your family? Even around your spirituality, what are you going to leave? And will you have had an impact? I want you to think about that. Legacy involves living intentionally. So inheritance and aiming to build into the next generation for their success. Now when I read this, I'm like, okay, I know this is for me, God. Because God always gives me things in, in generations. I've been in the church a long time. I got saved at an early age. So I started out as a teenager in the church. And I went into my young womanhood. And then into my middle. And now I am mature. <laughs> I'll be 60 in a couple of years. I'll be 59 next month. So, thank So things are different, right? But I started thinking about it, and I, I've always thought about this for my children because that's what my dad did with me. What are the things worth remembering to connect with my past, for my children? For those people that I mentor, for those people that I'm an auntie to, an auntie by marriage, an auntie by relationship, an auntie, to those people I'm a mentor to, to those people under the sphere of my influence, for those people that I have led at work, what do I leave them? So it's intentionally aiming to build into the next generation. Let's go to, I love the principles of God. There are spiritual principles throughout the Bible. We're going to go through Deuteronomy 4, I'm sorry, 6, 4, and I will read 4 through 9. I'll give you a chance to get there while I get some water. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, and with all, with your entire being, and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you this day shall be first in your own minds, and then 
You shall beat and sharpen them so as to make them penetrate and teach and impress them diligently upon the minds and hearts of your children. And you, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your home and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontlets, forehead bands between your eyes and you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house on your gates. This is Moses speaking. So his speech to the people, the Israelites, they were on the border of the promised land and he was continuing to talk to them. And so these passages, these next passages that we read are gonna be about some commands that Moses is like kind of drilling into them and about warnings he's trying to give them as the, as the person leading. He warns them about three things that will call, cause Israel to forget God and what he's done when they enter the land. One was affluence, so your status, idolatry, worshiping other gods, and hardship, finances. Israel is also instructed against forming three different types of relationships with the inhabitants of the land, political, social, or religious. Let's go to Deuteronomy 7.2. And when the Lord your God gives them over to you and smite them, you must utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them or show mercy to them. No treaties, no marriages, and definitely no following their faith or practices. Israel is also instructed against forming three, oh, I just said that, different types of inhabitants of the land, political, social, and affluent, religious. How is Israel supposed to obey all the commands and warnings? The same message is repeated over and over again by Moses. Remember what God has done. Israelites, don't forget. Look where he brought you from. Stop complaining. Remember. That is the principle here. Remember. What I love here is that God tells Israel to remember why he chose them out of all the other nations. He did not choose them because they were the biggest or the strongest or the best. And that's in Deuteronomy 7, 8 through 10. You won't read it for time. In fact, they were the smallest and the weakest. Actually, let's go to that. God, so let, let's read that. I want you to just hear it. I want you to put your eyes on it, actually. 7, 8 through 10. So Deuteronomy 7, um, 7, 8 through 10. But because the Lord loves you, and because he will keep the oath which he had sworn to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, recognize, and understand, therefore, the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant. Hey, he keeps covenant. And steadfast love and mercy with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repay those who hate him to their faith. He, by destroying them, he will not be slack to him who hates him, but will requit him to his face. So he loves us. He loves us. He's looking out for us. He has a plan and a purpose for us. Yeah, he chose us. Dad, he chose you right. to rule your household, to be one. And if they rule, it is a relationship. That's how God set it up, right? We know the man is the head of the household, but there's a relationship. And each person has a post. Each person has a function. So in fact, the 
Israelites were the smallest and the weakest, God chose Israel because he loves them. And he loved them for no other reason than that he chose to love them. I need that to resonate with you. He chose to love you. He chose to love me for no other reason but that he chose. So we belong to him. He chose. And when the people remember this fact, something should happen in their hearts. Say something should happen in our hearts when we remember that fact that he chose to love you. Somebody was asking Jesus, and he says, 36 reads, Teacher, which kind of commandment is great and important? And mine has a parenthesis, parenthesis that says the principal kind in the law. Some commandments are light, which are heavy. I'm going to read the next one. And he replied to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And in parentheses it says intellect. This is the great, most important principle and first commandment. So how does that connect? Jesus didn't answer, right? I mean, Jesus answered. That's how it connects. He didn't mention anything about dumb. He didn't mention anything about idolatry. He didn't mention anything about suffering. His response wasn't about politics. Yeah. It wasn't about social justice. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. about poli uh, political reform. Come on. Yes, stop. Oh, we shall love the Lord our God. Yeah. Yeah. With all our minds. With all our minds. Yeah. With all our stuff. Yeah. So, and when we do that, we obey. He's given us a level of intellect, our ability, again, in relationship with him, to do what we need to do for him. Now I'm going to quickly go through those Ten Commandments. You know them. Right? There's nothing here that says, that says anything about love. It says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Honor your mother and father. You shall not murder. Uh, murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And you shall not covet. Jesus came, so that's why Jesus came. Because when those were made, right, it was tough. You got penalized for being insulted. I'm glad I wasn't back then. <laughs> Jesus came at them. So Jesus came at this man with that verse from Deuteronomy, which we just read. The greatest command is to love with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the greatest command because love is the only force that can cause us to obey. 
obey every other law.
that God chose them. He could have chose anybody else, but he chose them. And his love was not just an emotion, it was deeper than that. Right? It was the emotion with an action that took him all the way to the cross. And that is the love of God. And so we know John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, and we are the whosoever, whoever you are, believes in him, shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so the time, by the time we get to Jesus, because now we're talking about in the New Testament, right? We're jumping from the old to the new, we're in Matthew. The second most important commandment, he said, is to love others. We actually now have the ability to obey. Okay, because we have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And we can love others because he first loved us, which is 1 John 4.19. We're not going to go and read them. And this love fulfills the whole law, L-E-W. Genesis 5.14. Parents, dads, do you have something to say to pass on? By showing your love, your children understand and they know. The Bible tells us through scripture about our inheritance and our legacy, so we ask ourselves, what is the most significant thing that I can pass on to future generations, and how should we go about it? Folks without children, moms, still can be you don't have to have a dad in the household, right? But the family was created for that structure. God created the family for that structure. But you still can do it. Greater is he that's in you. Yes, Even if the dad isn't in the home, you still can do it, moms. You can still do it, single dads, if you're doing it alone. And if you're doing it together, mom and dad, you still can do it. And dad, you can do it. This spiritual principle applies to us also no matter who we are. To put it differently, and to add a little spin to it, when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ and he judges our work of all of those that belong to him, the question will not be, Dad, whether you had children, Mom, whether you had children or not. But Jesus may ask you something like, what did you do with the things that I put in your hands. What did you do with the responsibility that I gave you for taking care of X, Y, and Z? Even if they're foster children, even if there's somebody that's living in your home, what did you do? What did you pass on to them? What did you show them? What did you give them? You will not ask, did you have children? Because he already knows that. What did you do? with what I gave you. You can put your kid's name in that middle, uh, in the line. What did you do with the responsibility of Brittany? What did you do with the responsibility of Melody and Mike? What did you do? In Ecclesiastes 9.10, the Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. <laughs> you can't take it with you. So do what you need to do now. We are called to steward our children. Dad, you are called to be the head of the household. You are called to steward your children. Wow. Some might get a great reward from God, right? Because he gives rewards, he does, when we get to heaven, right? We'll get crowns, we'll get rewards, and some might get a little reward. But behind that, what I feel, what God gave to me, is, will your faithfulness remain the same? Will your faithfulness remain the same? And what spiritual principles are you standing on to do what you need to do 
for your Lord, for your Savior, for the one who died for you. I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm not going to read a gazillion scriptures. I'm just going to read one, Psalm 78.4. We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. You can give that as a legacy, Dad. Godly dads. Right? I'm not talking about men that are in the world. Right now I'm speaking to the church. And if somebody under the sound of my voice is not a godly dad, it doesn't mean that you're a, a bad dad. But Christ died for you. His love is just insatiable. It's, it's overwhelming. I heard of a, um, a story by, he's one of my favorite teachers from back in the day, Charles Stanley. Um, and I remember when, this is in my church in New Jersey, we were studying about love and God's love. And Charles Stanley said, in all the years he had been preaching, and at that point it was like he was maybe 30, 40 years in, he went back to his repertoire of messages, and he had only preached one message of love. And so God was dealing with him about something. So he got a group of uh, trusted friends together. They did look, this little retreat to encourage one another. And he said, you know, I never realized that from, he didn't have a dad in the home. His dad died when he was a baby. So he was raised by his mom, single mom. And he said, they asked me a question. If Jesus was to swoop down, come down right now and swoop you up and wrap his arms around you, what would you do? And this grown man of 50, some 40, some years of age, he sobbed. He said, I preached it. Studied it, but I didn't understand it. It wasn't until God revealed Himself through you guys to me the fact that this goes all the way back to when I was a baby, never having a dad in my home. God revealed it to me in that way. There was no dad, there was a mother. She was loving, and you see, he turned out to be. A strong man of God, a man of accountability and integrity. So I'm going to. All right. I'm going to jump down here and skip some pieces. I'll get this back to you when I come again. So the. There was one piece I did want to share with you about the children of Israel. I want you to think about that about Charles Stanley. Because we're talking about God's love, dads. I knew, I knew my dad to be a provider. I knew my dad to be somebody I could a confidant, I could talk to. Um, I could tell him anything. He wouldn't judge me. Um, he wouldn't go off on me. I knew him to be tender. Actually, they don't even, it's funny, my mom, my mom did all of the discipline. Like, I used to get spanked and beaten, you know. She was like, you know, the ears are on. <laughs> my kids will not be spoiled. But my dad, I, he never spanked me, never. I always didn't have nothing. Um, we never even had a heated conversation. Um, that was my dad's personality. And so, I don't have the scripture in front of me, but as I was reading about the children of Israel, one of the things that Joshua and Joshua, when Joshua was, was starting to leave, he told the children of Israel to go back and leave stones. 
legacy, inheritance. Leave stones so that your children will know where we traveled yes, and where we trampled, so that they will see and they will understand yes, there is history. And we will pass it down through our mouth, yes. through our writing, yes. and through the things around us. Yes. So dad, yes. tell your kids, tell them about you. Tell them about your love of God, your love of your family, your love of your wife. And I know they feel that, but tell them, speak to it. Remind them of the things that are important to pass down, that they should be passing down to their children. I'm going to jump all the way to the end. I'll share this with you another time. One of the things that um, the Barna Group, they are a uh, culturally faith-based organization that does statistics on everything in the church. You can ask, you can Google them and you can find out anything. And so I did some research because I wanted to know. I'm bringing it in now. Stats tell us, statistics tell us, that 63% youth suicides are done by children from fatherless homes. Now again, this is not to bang up anybody who's a single mom. There are reasons for that. If God hasn't put you with anyone yet, don't make that move. God will guide you and he'll lead you. Your steps are ordered by him. You don't need to jump and get a man just because you heard, oh, Sister Margie said no. <laughs> no, don't do that. 90%, 90% of runaway children are fatherless. 90. 85% of all children with behavioral disorders are fatherless, from fatherless homes. They may not be fatherless because they have a dad, but they're from fatherless homes. 71% of high school dropouts are from fatherless homes. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen with other people and other things. 85% of all youth in prison are from fatherless homes. And while we might not find this really shocking because we see it, we know it's going on, it's sad. It's overwhelming. So dads, men, brothers who will one day be your dad, your influence is important in the home. The word of God teaches us those principles. You need to be there. Now again, there are scenarios and situations, somebody's divorced, somebody, something happened, I get that. You still need to be present. So you do what you can, given what your scenario, your situation is. As a child matures, he or she will look to their dad for decisions and adopting values. I know. That's true, because I experienced that, right? I'm sure some of us have. Studies have proven this. Where the father may be inadequate or, or not present, this may become difficult for a child. As Charles Stanley indicated, he said, I have a lot of bumps to get, uh, going in my life, even though I gave my life to Christ. He says, there's an issue if I'm a born again preacher and I've only preached on love once. Because I didn't know. It's a relational thing. So dads, it's that intimacy you have with your child where they feel comfortable to come to you and talk to you about
to what we tell our children to do can sometimes be the determining factor if a child who was raised in a godly home turns to Christ or turns away from Christ on their own because they left that home. They turn away. If what you preach and what you live don't match, your children know. They know and they see it. They may not have to dwell on it because you're their parents. And how you respond to situations and things that you're doing is crucial in being a godly dad. I thank God for my husband. Sometimes it kills us, our family, because he's so philosophical. And he's so, I, but I know if, if the accountability, I know that's the person that God had for me. He's very like, much like my dad. Everything is laying around, and we joke about it because he'll say, well, you know, uh, the philosophy of that. And I'm like, no, she's not. I've got to be real. <laughs> stop it, stop me. And I remember when Oman was young, Amari and Ayana did it too, but not as much as Amon did. Poor Amon. He would sit like and he would be lecturing and Amon would be just and he just like beat me, spank me. <laughs> Locked me up in a room. I gotta sit here for 45 minutes and hear about the philosophy. And now Oman is like his dad. <laughs> So parents, dads, it's important. This applies to all of us. I'm wrapping it up, Tiffany. I can see your attitude. You need those dark nights. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming in. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Listen, we have to preach a better sermon with our lives than we do with our lips. Yes. And rose for you, and then you just have to confess it publicly. 
Pastor Tony don't play. <laughs> Brothers, dads, our church has men, we have men of integrity, men that are serving God, men that love God, men that really take care of their families, men that are providers. We thank God for that. And so if you accepted Jesus Christ, Praise the Lord. The angels in heaven are rejoicing for you. They are rejoicing. The Bible says when one person gives their life to Christ, that the angels rejoice. And we rejoice here with you too. And there's only one other step that I want to say. Brother Eric, do you want to give something we dedicate? I know you did. Okay. Um, we are doing that now. We're right now. Um, of the praise God. Um, the one thing I want to say to those of you on Facebook, you've got to find a good church. You can't do it alone. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, to not forget the assembling of ourselves we, because we uplift and we encourage one another until the day approaches. And the day will approach. Each one of us will meet our makers, so you have to find a good Bible-believing church where there's a pastor that will shepherd you. And if you're a woman and you gave your life to Christ, the same thing. Come on in. Find a church. Praise God. Amen. Praise to you, God. Amen. I know you won't want 
Praise the Lord. Father God, we thank you for the word for our talk today. Father God, we pray that the word is absorbed into the hearts and minds of all those gathered here today. Now, Father God, as we leave this place with every your sight, we pray for traveling in mercy. We ask that you go before us and find our getting it from all accidents, seen and unseen, until we meet again. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. One more second announcement. Praise God.